Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the BFS Fishing Channel. Yes, that's right. We've gone ahead and rebranded and I, I think it was about time for me to go ahead and do so. Uh, Runner for Rue was a little bit hard to search for and it was about my my forerunner, which I, I used to like taking on off-roading adventures and I still do. I just haven't um, really gone on one anytime lately. Anyhow, so yeah, we've gone ahead and rebranded the channel. We are now known as the BFS Fishing Channel, and I think it's going to be a little bit easier for people to kind of find the channel, but also it kind of gets across what the channel is about to new viewers. So with that being said, I do want to say thank you to each and every one of you. It's kind of mind boggling and mind blowing that this channel has kind of gone from you know, like 20, 30 followers all the way up until as of now, 403 followers. Wow. I'm really, yeah, I have, I'm at a loss for words for what to say. So thank you to all of you guys out there who are following along and subscribing. I, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Without it all being said, I, I do want to get to the review. And today we're going to be reviewing something a little bit different and that is a fishing rod. So here it is. This is the fishing rod that we're going to be reviewing today. And this rod is called the Dankung Glassfin Fiberglass Rod. So I'm going to start off with some specs. This rod is a three piece fiberglass construction rod. It is a hollow blank and that's kind of important. And the action is a medium fast and it is a ultra light rod. Now the Assembled length is about a four foot seven. Dan Kung also has a slightly longer version of this rod, but what was sent to me was a four foot seven inch rod. Now, actually, before I get any further, I do want to say that my reviews, I'm doing my best to be as unbiased as possible. Meaning if I experience something bad, I'm going to tell you about that bad experience. If I experience something good, I'm going to tell you about that good experience. But please bear in mind that we are all human beings and being as unbiased as possible, it's not always doable. That being said, this particular unit was sent to me free of charge for a review. And anytime that something like that happens, I will disclose that up front. I did not pay any money for this rod. I did make sure with the manufacturer that I am okay to provide an unbiased review. And so they agreed to that. And anytime I do receive an item free of charge for review, I will clear with that brand or manufacturer that I am allowed to deliver an unbiased review ahead of time. Okay, so moving on with the specs. Sorry about that segue. So it's a four foot seven inch rod closed length so like this collapsed it's going to be about 19.3 inches or 49 centimeters the weight is actually very very light it's about 82 grams and so this kind of rivals some other japanese jdm trout rods that i have and actually comes in under their weight so that's pretty impressive the lure weight rating for this particular rod is going to be about one to five grams. The longer version is going to be about one to seven. Uh, the line weight rating is two to eight pound test. And then if you're using braid, they're suggesting that you use between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 go braid. Uh, again, this is a fiberglass hollow construction blank. They are using Fuji Alkanite guides throughout the rod. And then the rod handle is a Nihon branded handle. The cork on it is very, very good quality quality cork. It uh, it also rivals some of the more expensive uh, Japanese rods that I have that are around like 350 bucks. I want to say that the cork is on par with, if not better than those. It's a very soft feeling cork. And then the handle is a style of grip that I really, really like. I like this. Uh, metal pistol grip. I like to two, two finger grip this and it's very, very comfortable. The end section is metal. It's not rubber. And then the real seat section is actually real wood on this particular model. I do believe that you can get uh, different handles and uh, different handle constructions. And then you can also get different colors. I think they have like a, a blue color, an orange color, and 
uh, maybe a solid white. Don't quote me on that though. This particular one is a clear fiberglass. Anyways, so why is this rod so special? Well, this rod is particularly and specifically designed for something called flick casting. Flick casting is not really a sidearm cast and it's not really an overhand cast. So those are the two kind of more conventional forms of casting. Flick casting is where you're kind of underhand casting but you're casting towards your body where you load and then you cast in front of you. So this was kind of designed specifically for native trout casting or native trout fishing because you don't really have all that room all around you because typically you're cast, you're fishing in like a wooded area. Yeah, you're navigating these like really tight streams and creeks. That being said, I really like flick casting. It's a really, really fun way to cast and it's a really fun way to kind of reinvigorate the whole fishing experience. Another another interesting thing that I was just thinking about is because this rod is only four foot seven inches when it's fully constructed, it's a very, very small and very short rod. So if you're stuck in one of those places where you can't actually get out and fish and you're kind of bored, you can set up and do target practice with this rod. You set up a cup with like 10 feet in front of you and then just flick cast like a, a dummy lure or a practice lure that, that weighs around like two grams or so, maybe three grams. Um, and it's a really fun way to kind of get improve your flick casting skills and kind of, you know, pass the time. Let's get into the construction of the rod. So this is a handmade rod. And so as such, you're going to experience some kind of quirks of handmade products, right? So this rod is supposed to have a little more backbone than your typical fiberglass rod. And what I mean is on AliExpress, what you typically see are these kind of solid blank construction fiberglass rods, which are very whippy, have no backbone. They're probably like a medium, maybe even slower than that in terms of their action. And so what Dan Kung did was they used a hollow fiberglass blank, so that gives a little bit more stiffness. And then on top of that, they kind of reinforced this uh, butt section of the rod. So what they were trying to mimic was Torre. So Torre has on some of its uh, carbon blanks, it's got like a cross weave pattern and that's to kind of reinforce the, the butt section of the rod to give it a lot more backbone. Uh, on this one, what I kind of noticed was that it looks like, I don't know if you guys can actually see that, but it looks like if you look closely, there's these white lines that are kind of in a spiral pattern around the rod blank. What I think they did was they took uh, a thin piece of fiberglass cloth and they kind of wrapped it around about from, I don't know if it's going to be at the very butt end of the blank all the way up until about here. But you can tell that they kind of reinforced this area and then you can see where the reinforcement ends because of the change in thickness of the actual blank itself. So good job on them on kind of coming up with a way of doing that to a fiberglass blank because I, as far as I understand, uh, I don't think there are any fiberglass blanks that are using a similar construction to uh, what Torre uses on their blanks. The guides on this rod are alkanite, and I want to say that the wrappings are done very well. They are hand done, and the glassing is done fairly well. I don't see any kind of inconsistencies. Everything looks really nice and smooth. Um, there are maybe like one or two air bubbles here and there, but uh, you know, it's a handmade rod, so what, what do you expect, right? The Biggest downside that I found to the rod being handmade was the ferrule. So the ferrule on the butt section of my particular rod actually popped out. Um, I was kind of messing around with it, kind of flexing it, and I noticed that there was a little bit of a, what looked like liquid kind of moving around in there. And I think what that was is the the CA glue that they used to kind of affix the ferrule to the the, um, the blanks wasn't set, which is really odd to me. And so I was able to actually pull out the ferrule itself. And then I was kind of stuck with a ferrule that wasn't attached to the, the um, blank, which is not a huge deal, but uh, I don't want to really be fishing with a ferrule that's kind of loose. And so I reached out to the manufacturer and they 
showed me the kind of glue that they use, but actually you can just use any kind of CA or cyanoacrylate uh, or super glue that you've got on hand. The one thing that if you do that, be quick about it because that cyanoacrylate glue will set very, very quickly. And I learned the hard way that that happens. If you see here, the, the ferrule is about this long. You can kind of see the darker section there. And I was only able to get about a about a quarter of it into the rod blank at the bottom. Uh, I haven't noticed any change in performance, but you know, if you want to get it to that middle section, I suggest trying to find a slower acting CA glue before you try to fix your ferrule that comes out, if that happens to you. Uh, I have already talked to the manufacturer about this, and so hopefully um, their future future rods will not um, have this kind of issue. Okay, so those are the pros and cons of the construction. I will say that the rod is a very, very fun rod to fish with. It is very sensitive. It is very reactive. The sweet spot of lure weight is, I want to say between three and like four to four and a half grams. One gram you definitely can do because I was casting a trout magnet with this rod. You can't get very far, but the sensitivity is really good because I was able to catch around like three to four inch dink bass on this and uh, it was really, really fun. So, you know, if you're looking to target some smaller species, bluegill, dink bass, uh, you know, even smaller, like one pound bass or uh, so small stock trout, then I think this rod is a very, very fun rod and a very good choice to have in your, uh, your arsenal. Uh, they, they rate this rod to about 1500 grams and that's about like 3.3 pounds. So if you're going to lift a fish out of the water, try not to go over three pounds of weight. I don't have personal experience with catching a, a large fish on this. I don't know that I would want to because <laughs> I don't think I'd want to risk breaking the rod or uh, my equipment. Anyways, so what are my, what are my thoughts on this rod? Well, if you're looking for a fiberglass flick casting rod, I think that you can't really go wrong with the Dan Kun glass fin. It gets really good reviews from other YouTubers and other people who have reviewed or used and owned this rod. And in my experience, I want to say that that is generally the case. I, I agree with them. This rod is very, very fun. You're not getting a you're not getting a $500 rod, but for $129, you are getting a very well-made handmade rod that provides a new way of casting and is very, very fun to cast. So I think that is going to be it for this one. Oh, I, I do. The manufacturer did give me a code that will save you like $5 off. So 129 down to 124. So if you'd like to use that code, please use it. Uh, you'll, you can find it in the uh, description below. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. I do get a little bit of a kickback. Do I care about the kickback? Not really. I think it's, uh, they give it to me in the form of credit. So if I got credits, then I would be able to test more of their, their products. Yeah. Anyways, that being said, I think that's going to do it for this video. It's pretty long so far. I really thank you guys for watching all the way through if you've got to the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.